Good morning. Many of you heard the story in 2002 after being asked by my partner if we were going to attend Sunday service, Sunday Easter Sunday services, and I took her to the earthen dike at Attic's Reservoir to watch the sunrise. I was told I needed to do better. The next year, I walked into the fellowship at 1504 Wirt Road and was greeted with smiles and acceptance and just kept coming back. The fellowship provided me with knowledge about interesting subjects from interesting speakers. It boosted my confidence in, my, in sharing my thoughts, bolstered my search for progressive-minded people and satis satisfied my need to be involved and be challenged. When preparing for this service, I looked up what the definition of fellowship is. I found that fellowship is to be a community of interest, activity, feeling, or expression. It means a company of equals or friends, the quality or state of being camaraderie. It does, does not explain how to achieve how that is achieved. How do you find common interests, feelings, and expressions? Are we, are we really equals or friends? When I think of the fellowship, I think of two things. The destination, which is the physical building. I often say that I'm, I'm going to the fellowship. The other is the people that I've met while being in the building, my fellows. We are, as fellows, French. Are we as fellows? friends and equals? I believe in some degree we are. We may not be equals in everything, but we all have something to offer. I've also always been involved in some sort of sports, whether it was whether I was considered good or not. My high school track coach told me he needed a calendar to keep my time while I was running a mile. I made points for the opposite opposition while playing basketball by shooting at the wrong hoop. I bored with baseball, do as the saying goes, baseball only happens while you're not watching. I did a lot of not watching. I did succeed at football, perhaps due to the fact that I had something to offer. Despite my track coach's opinion, I was quick for my size, knew enough to use leverage while blocking, understood the plays, it was not afraid to tackle anything that came my way. I never excelled at a sport that didn't involve a team. Golf, tennis, and even the lonely post out in the right field can be overwhelmingly stressful. The only adage that carries through is no matter if you win or lose, it's how you play that game. I can only compare it to traveling by yourself. You can take in all the kind of sights and experiences but to me, they are not the fulfilling as they are when you share a trip with a friend. Experiences can be great or devastating, but they will always be shared. When a good trip is realized, what is shared? Smiles, hugs, satisfaction, and jubilation. When goals are not met, what do you experience? Perhaps tears, disappointment, hostility, this defeat. But what is shared in both instances is emotions, camaraderie, and the bonding in the moment. When I joined the fellowship in 2003, I was one of the youngest members, or it seemed at the time, and was willing to jump in and do my share. Using a sports analogy, I reasoned that most of the current members had done their share of making this fellowship work. It was all right with me that they were sitting on the bench, so to speak. I always had a fondness for the bench sitters, the second or third stringers that very rarely were able to play in a competitive team sports. It wasn't their fault that they sat on the bench. It could have been their lack of stature, the lack of experience, or their lack of grasping how to play, how the games were played. But if you've gone through any type of physical practice on the field, in a studio, or at a desk, you know you have to have determination to succeed. No one goes through a constant, repetitive, concentrated, and often numbing, numbing 
practice without dedication. You know you might not succeed, but that is not the goal. It is a matter of progressing forward, and it doesn't matter if you're seven or 60, you're a part of the team, the orchestra, the firm, and you share a fellowship. I started preparing this presentation back in the, in the 1st of August. The, two, the, two, the 2020 Olympics were starting and the NBA finals had just finished. I was inspired by both. Although Simone Biles did not reach her goals to be an Olympic gold medal winner, she did remain part of the team, cheering on her teammates and ultimately winning a bronze medal. I have read where at the top of her spins, she is so high off the floor, she could dump a basketball with her toes, if that was humanly possible. Apparently, when she's spinning in the air, she has the presence of mind to know where she is, an incredible athlete. But what is also remarkable is that the three other women who trained at the same facility as Simone Biles had also made the Olympic team. I have to think that Simone had elevated their tr her training associates. My inspiration was transferred to her teammates when Simone stepped, on, stepped aside and she continued to get the support from her team, her fellows. Fellowship is there for the ups and downs of life. In a time where top athletes are demanding trades to play on what they believe are superior teams, with the hopes of reaching greatness and monetary enrichment, an immigrant to the country has led the National Basketball League in winning a championship in one of the poorest underserved communities in the United States. Yanis Adekumpa came from an impoverished background to be one of the greatest athletes in the USA today. He didn't get there by trading off to a different ideology from which he came. He did it by hard work and being persistent. Years ago, when I started coming to the fellowship, I too was starting a new relationship. I was enamored with the friendliness, freer in my thinking, comforting and knowing that I wasn't the only liberal in Texas. I embraced what the fellowship had to offer. I remember standing up at the podium or maybe it was at the milestone mic and declaring that this was my Alamo. I would be faithful and persistent in my belief that the fellowship is worth working at to keep it alive. I certainly hope the fellowship has a better outcome than the Alamo. So how long do we stay persistent? You always hear about boxers that they should have quit while they still could. Do you trade teams when you are losing? I hear the Texan fans are waiting to find, their, to find out whether Deshaun Watson will play before buying their tickets. What kind of fans are those? What is their allegiance to? I've been asking myself questions like these of late in regards to the fellowship. Is this a sinking ship with an aging population, a membership in decline with dwindling bank account? Are we sustainable? Can we keep going at the same course as in previous years? Or do we need to get off the bench and play another round? Are we in fellowship? I believe this fellowship is at a crossroads. As you all know by now, our administrator will retire at the end of the year. That is 25 years of knowledge walking out the door. Over the years, that person has taken on more and more responsibilities and will be hard to replace. Our near future will be challenging, but it is not insurmountable. Maybe we need to rethink how things will work. I often joke with my fellowship cohorts that the fellowship reminds me of the old TV show, McHale's Navy. It was a show about a bunch of Navy enlisted men with special personalities that were assigned as outcasts to a rundown PT boat during the World War II. The Misfits crew was made up of a menagerie of characters, but all had special gifts. When confronted with what seemed an insurmountable task, 
They always used their individual skills to succeed at what lay before them. I believe we are similar to that crew. Maybe my niece said it best by summing up my family as a family that puts the fun in dysfunctional. Maybe that describes the fellowship too. We do have members that contribute that continues in trying to make this fellowship vital. Janice LaRock has diligently kept the fellowship Sunday services alive with the help of John Pepper, Gary Putnam, Julie Wilson, Dodie McKellar, and myself. She has also organized Zoom meetings such as Stand By Me to offset the isolation of being quarantined and the Wednesday night happy hour, which gives members another outlet in sharing merriment. Gary Putnam has resurrected the Social Justice Outreach Committee, which will establish fellowship ties and monetary contributions to local social justice outlets. Our MAM contributions in serving the at Turning Point are examples of that outreach. You too have an opportunity to sponsor an organization. An office committee, which I led, has documented functions of the administrator's job, accomplished some succession planning, has organized files and reduced duplicate procedures. One of the greatest milestones this committee has achieved is the establishment of Google Drive a filing system that can be shared from your home. This will allow for more organized office, an opportunity for immediate updating of files and sharing of fellowship knowledge. This particular process was spearheaded again by Janice LaRock. The office team consisted of Janice, Gary Putnam, Vicki Chin, Bob Wiener, and myself. I have found, and maybe you will agree, that we are all rusty with the fellowship business and what is expected of us here at the fellowship. When we returned to the fellowship last June, I personally had to read the greeters responsibilities list to remember to put on my fellowship ID badge. Little things, and maybe some big things too, need to be reestablished in our relationships. We all know relationships require attention and care to go the distance and thrive, but we tend to wing it. This is practical. We are busy. Life goes on at a crazy pace, but few things are more important than attention in a relationship to make them flourish. Like gardening, flowers need to be watered and weeded for healthy gardens to grow. Due to the past COVID shutdown, the state of the COVID we are in now, and last year's, last winter's freeze, we are experiencing that proper maintenance is needed to keep us in good shape as well as the, at the fellowship. I have furnished an office committee final report as a snapshot of where we are as a fellowship. Let's start there and then express all things we like about the fellowship, the service, the friends, the sharing of meals, the accomplishments of the past, the promise of the future, all the good stuff in recent memory. Let's re reinforce each other on jobs well done and mentor and distrib distribute constructive criticism with a light tongue. Like watering the garden, this can heal and strengthen our bonds with each other. This can be tough and sometimes awkward but with proper practice, it can heal and transform. Let's name our regrets and start anew. We need to learn from our mistakes, recognize what we do well, and think what we could be doing better. Doesn't that sound familiar? We have heard it countless times over the years, and yet we plot on doing what is easiest. I have mentioned a few committees that are working, and you, have may, and you may have noticed a repetition in the names involved. That list of names needs to increase. I've not come here this morning to speak fire and brimstone or try to put you on a guilt trip. You all know your role. I only want to paint as accurate picture of the fellowship as I can. Our near journey will not be smooth, but our perseverance 
and with fellowship, it, it is my hope that we can look back in years from now and feel grand. To practice what I preach, I would like to show gratitude to a few people. You, you may know some of them. First, I'm grateful to all of our forefathers and mothers who had the presence of mind to start this fellowship. I would like to thank Patricia Ballinger. Every time she puts on a kitchen apron, she becomes a mother to us all. Sarah Harib, although she lives in Dallas, has continually supported what we have been doing. Steve Bleisko and Sigrid Stewart, Mr. Rockman with his deep voice and guitar playing skills, and Sigrid, whose quiet presence has always brought me peace. Don Buston, hail to the chief. Thank you for sharing my enthusiasm, enthusiasm to push issues sometimes out of bounds. Victoria Chin, whose perseverance to accomplish a goal is unmatched. Beverly Collins, thank you for your level-headedness, headed commentaries and participation. Jimmy Dunn, thank you for putting the A in atheists. Lisa Gilchrist, thank you, Lisa, for all the work you've done over the years. Mauricio Gomez, muchas gracias, amigo. John and Katie Harib, thank you both for your dedication and sharing with us your little house on the prairie. Patty Henry and Jeff Grass. Patty, we appreciate your words of wisdom and Jeff for blowing your horn. Colin Kirkaby, I always appreciate a twisted joke that at times may be an inside joke, but always points to a new understanding. Allie Cohn, thank you, Allie, for educating me about my body and being my guru to boot. Janice LaRock, the woman who feminized WWJD. You are always an inspiration. J.R. Marshall, your auctioneering has set the bar. Tim and Eko McGregor, thank you for your support and my trips to the dictionary to learn what you are saying. Eko, thank you for your kind words. Dodie McKellar, thank you, Dodie, for your elegant way of giving an accurate account, whether good or bad. Carol Montague, thank you for sharing your stories of your younger years. Sue and Jonathan Needle, I thank you for, thank you both for your service to the board and bringing your family to the fellowship. Laura Nickel, you entertained us with your singing and dancing. Sue Owens and Howard Patton, Sue, thank you for your warm smile and Howard for the ease in which you join projects. Ryan Parkinson, thank you for trying to make the fellowship better. John Pepper, I'm grateful to know you and like how you speak your mind. Randy Jarnier, a warmer and friendlier person you could not be found. Gary Putnam, thank you, Gary, for your encouragement and, an in, and your invitations to get involved. I will get even. Annette Rubisky, thank, let the good times roll. You've always been there for the fellowship. Mary and Floyd Schlett, we always had Moonbeam. And Floyd, thank you for your good sense. Doreen and Mark Solomon, even as non-members, your support of the fellowship is greatly appreciated. Winona and Lloyd Stewart, I love that Lloyd and I can share our interest in birds. And Winona, we share a language that not only that only upper Midwesterners can understand. Your sarcasm is precious. Gus and Melissa Torres, a big thanks for your chainsaw, Gus, and Melissa for your insightful presentations. Bob Weiner, you have always stated your opinions clearly and the, the wry sense of humor you bring to the table. Kim Willis and Gary Yoki, Kim, I am grateful for your involvement and appreciation. Appreciate your compassion for others. Gary, our Ch Jeopardy champ, Thank you for your ability to bring to light injustices and judgment that always levels the playing field. Julie and Robert Wilson. Robert, thank you for sharing your stories and making me feel I'm sharing 15 minutes of fame. Julie, your sensitive opinions bring a dimension of spirituality to every issue. Michael Mertz, thank you for your kind words in helping me to be better. 
I'm thankful to be able to watch Helena, Hannah, Hallie, Alex, Noah, and Aubrey grow. Thank you to Sherry Wallenford and Dan Oxshall for joining the fellowship. And last of all, I wanna thank all the visitors that took the time out of their schedules to be here with us today. I hope your visit was worth your while. So say yes to fellowship. Let's work together to make us all strong. Can I get an amen?